just lost sight of the Queensport light Down the bay before us And the wind has blown some cold today With just a wee touch of snow Along the shore from Lazy Head Hard to beam half island Tonight we let the anchor go Down in Fogarty's Cove Stan Rogers was born in 1949 and though raised in rural Ontario, spent summers in Nova Scotia with family, laying the groundwork for an appreciation of maritime life which would later surface in his songwriting. When he was five, his uncle built him his first guitar out of birch plywood, welding rods, and a toothbrush. At 14, he gave his first public performance at the Ebony Knight Coffee House in Hamilton, singing Jimmy Rogers' songs and his own versions of poetic verse written by his grandfather. My mother was born about, and brought up about 16 miles down the road there in Canso. All my life, you know, I've, I've been coming here, and uh, when I wasn't here, I was hearing stories about it, you know. My grandmother still lives up there, and my, my Aunt June and Uncle Sam. And uh, any little, anything that happens in, uh, here, you know, back there I am sitting back there in Ontario. But when I hear that, it affects me, you know. Uh, when I hear about some fellow who's lost a boat or... Uh, you know, somebody who drowned or, uh, you know, some ship polluting the coast or something. I mean, that, that affects me very deeply because I feel more at home here than I do in Ontario. You know, I, even though I was raised in Ontario and, and, and born there, you know, my, my family ties, my cultural roots, everything is tied up with, with this Chetabakter shore. In high school, he began to take music more seriously and gained early experience as a bass player in local Hamilton rock bands and later in campus folk circles as a student at McMaster and Trent Universities. His professional career began in 1969 in the Ontario and Maritime Folk Club and Festival Circuit, and in 1970 he was signed to RCA Records in Toronto. He recorded two singles for the label, Here's to You Santa Claus in 1970 and The Fat Girl Rag in 1971, followed by a self-titled LP later that same year. In the mid-1970s, he received a Canadian Broadcast Corporation commission for documentaries on various aspects of Canadian life. The summers spent at the family home had influenced him greatly, and as his interest drifted toward folk music, it was his Aunt June in Canso, Nova Scotia, who encouraged him to write songs about his family home. An imposing man of six foot four, he possessed a voice that seemed to start deep in his toes. Yet at heart, he was a gentle poet and an intellect whose rise in popularity began when he discovered the songwriting potential of the Canadian Maritimes, the home of both his parents. The history and character of the Maritime fishing and mining villages were the source for his debut album, Fogarty's Cove, released on friend Mitch Podolik's Burn Swallow Records. That album contained instant classics including Barrett's Privateers, 45 Years, and Make and Break Harbor, and as a small independent recording, garnered attention from critics as Folk Album of the Year. That album was later re-released along with the releases of Turnaround, Stan's follow-up album, after Stan's mother, Valerie, stepped in to offer her son her life savings to launch not only the album, but also a record label and a mail-order business, taking the name of Fogarty's Cove as the label's imprint. With two albums to promote, Stan started to play with a band that included his brother Garnet, Dave Allen Eady, Grit Laskin, and Paul Mills, and was so inspired by the performances that he decided to capture the moments in 1979 with the release Between the Breaks Live. The album opened doors nationally for him and performances in Western Canada led him to discover that he was able to write not only about the Maritimes, but also about other parts of the country. Following the tour, he returned home to write songs for his concept album, Northwest Passage. Stan continued to travel North America with his band, Nell Garnett on fiddle and Jim Morrison on bass, and helped to establish a national identity for Canadian songwriting. Anyone who has never heard of him before, who has never been exposed to his music once they hear it, just never forgets it. It just gets under their skin. They recognize it instantly as being something so uniquely Canadian and it's talking about them and 
and it makes him very special to them. Stan continued to be a passionate Canadian and took great pride in being able to write song cycles that chronicled the many parts of Canada that he visited, including the Arctic, the prairies, the west, the Great Lakes, and the east, and almost every other province and territory in his homeland. His songs brought to life the lives of ordinary Canadians who worked in the fisheries, farms, and mines. He considered both Calgary and Nova Scotia as second homes and represented the sentiments of Canadians as well as any author, politician, or artist. His music, I think, was universal. I don't think he set out like a lot of, I think, commercial music does and says, here's a formula, let's follow it. He created his own formula. He was so successful at what he did because he didn't try to fit into anyone else's uh, niche. He, was, he created his own. Returning home from the Kerrville Folk Festival, a fire started in the restroom of his plane, and he, along with 22 others, died as the aircraft was forced to make an emergency landing. His untimely death still resonates throughout the country. In May of 1984, Stan Rogers was posthumously awarded the Diplôme d'Honneur by the Canadian Conference of the Arts. His music continues to inspire people, and in addition to his lyrics being cited in several poetry anthologies, they have been used in films, plays, and musicals, and have been referred to as one of the touchstones of modern Canadian history. His contribution to folk music and his meteoric rise to the top is considered immense in the minds of experts. In a short time, he wrote over 100 original songs that were considered instant classics during his life. Over 25 artists, including the Battlefield Band, Eric Bogle, John Allen Cameron, the Tannehill Weavers, Margaret Crystal, Mary Margaret O'Hara, Peter, Paul and Mary, and Raffi have all recorded his songs. Stan Rogers' songs, though set in traditional format, spoke eloquently for the many lives that reflect the diversity of the modern Canadian experience. His songs gave voice to those whose work is closest to the land and to the sea, sailors, fishermen, and farmers, as well as the dispossessed and disaffected. His themes were universal, those of honor, love, and hope, yet his terms of reference were evocatively specific, and his sense of Canadian history was equally poetic and heroic. There's nobody I've ever met who, uh, who's had as much talent just pure, raw talent as Stan. Who, there's no one I know who could put words and music together as well as Stan. There's no one who I know who had as much feeling for what he was doing as an artist as well as Stan. Where the earth shows its bones of wind, broken stone, and the sea and the sky are warm. I'm caught out of time, my blood sings with wine, and I'm running naked in the sun. There's God in the trees, I am weak in the knees, and the sky is a painful blue. I'd like to look around, but honey, all I see is you. Now the summer city lights will soften the night Till you think that the air is clear And I'm sitting with friends Where 45 cents will buy another glass of beer He's got something to say but I'm so far away That I don't know who I'm talking to Cause you just walked in the door And honey, all I see is you 